We're praying. God, once again, we thank you for another opportunity to gather to study your word. We thank you for these who are gathered. Now we ask that you would help us uh, as we study your word. We ask that you would give us insight as to what you're trying to teach us in today's lesson. Bless us as we study in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. The attendance code is about, was buzzed on the screen. You should have already. Did, did everybody get Put it on the screen just one more time. One more second, gentlemen. The attendance code, then we're going to go and get started. Thank you so much for staying, for sharing. Amen. All right, we'll leave that on the screen just for a few more seconds. I see a few phones still out. And we'll go ahead and get started. Brother Herbert Brown will be presenting the lesson today. Amen. So we're going to do this. He, you know Herbert does it expeditiously. <laughs> so get ready to respond. All right, let's say amen as Brother Herbert is coming at this time. Amen. Oh, one more thing before while he's coming. We're on lesson, we're on the, we have one more lesson this quarter, so your Sabbath school materials will be passed out next week. So come prepared next week, and we'll probably be in Grace Chapel to get your Sabbath school materials. Let's say amen as Herbert is coming. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, we have, we don't have but a little while because the, uh, AYS, AYM, they're coming up here, so we have to get out of the way for the children. That's all right, as long as it's the children. Amen. Amen. All right. This is, we're on Lesson 12, Tried and Crucified. Brother Larry, how important is this lesson this week? This lesson this week is very important because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was his purpose for coming into this world to redeem us through his life, death, birth, resurrection, just as well as his second coming. Now we notice the lesson title is Tried and Crucified. We serve a mighty good God, a loving, kind, a merciful, and understanding, a patient, and forgiving God. We have more than enough to be thankful for. But this particular lesson, Tried and Crucified, it was for us purposely. In other words, he was substituted his life, Brother Tate, for mine. He was our substitution and surety. All right. All right, it says on the Sabbath afternoon, the last paragraph, this week from the question of Pilate, are you the king of the Jews? To the mocking soldiers, the sign above the cross, and the mocking of the religious leaders, he saved others, himself he cannot save. To the unexpected appearance of Joseph of Arimathea, the chapter is filled with painful ironies that nevertheless reveal powerful truth about the death of Jesus and what it means. All right, we'll go to Sunday's part. Are you the king of the Jews? Who asked Jesus that? Pilate. Did he know if Jesus was the king of the Jews? No. Go ahead. Did somebody answer? Uh, no. Okay, he didn't know. Did you just say something big? Oh, okay. All right, this said, read Mark 15, 1 through 15. What kind of ironous situation occurred here? See, the entire council got together to plot against Jesus, right? And then they didn't know what to do with Jesus, so they took him to who? Pilate. To Pilate. Now, how would you describe Pilate? How would y'all describe Pilate? Was he a good man? Was he? No. He was considered a judge. Wait a minute. He was not kind. He was not kind. What other, what other words would y'all use to describe him? Ruthless? <laughs> Politician? He was weak. All right. He was not fair. Okay. Well, my word would be he was a coward. That too. He was a coward. That too. Now, why was he a coward? Go ahead, Charlie. 
Well, I'm going to ask the first question. I think he was prejudiced, too, because he didn't want to deal with uh, nobody other than his own race. He didn't want to deal with the things of the uh, Jewish people. And he was a coward because he wanted to not have to make the decision to uh, convict Jesus. Because, first of all, he didn't want no riot. He didn't want the people to look at him like he was a, 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 some kind of bold and, and big leader. He knew if he made that decision, it's going to make him look bad, and plus it's going to be an uproar, and he didn't want no martyr. He wanted folks to think that he was for the right, and he didn't want to you know, be looking bad. Okay. Somebody else here, Mike. Go ahead. He knew that Jesus was not guilty, right. and he um, chose to um, Freedom is guilty because of, of the, of the uh, um, he didn't want to make a choice because, because um, he knew he was going to be convicted for doing it. And, and, and in the long run, he ended up, up being convicted of killing Jesus. Um, right. Okay, Vic. Yeah, I was going to say he's a, he was a coward because uh, he knew what was right. He knew that Jesus... He said himself that he found no fault in him. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you said you find no fault in the person, why are you, you now presenting this person to be crucified? Yes, I'm say. Okay. I, actually, I was going to say the same thing that Brother just said. He knew that he wasn't guilty of anything. He knew that Jesus had done no wrong. I'm trying to remember, didn't his wife have a dream or something? Yes, yes. that's true. And his, I mean, the wife was told in a dream don't touch this man. He hasn't done anything wrong. So he knew, but he couldn't stand for the right. I think Pilate also, he was very political. Yes, he was ruthless, but as much as he wanted to let Jesus go, he, he knew from, uh, from Rome, from Caesar, if he had any other uh, discord or, 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 or overthrows, he was only thinking about how would this, where would this lead me? I can't afford to have another riot on my hands. But he never thought that Jesus was uh, guilty. He didn't even want to uh, condemn Jesus. But like you said, fellow teacher, brother teacher, he was a coward if he would have only stood up. But he, get, he caved in to the political pressure to what would be best for him. Okay, let's read this. Uh, it's a read mark 15, 1 through 15. What kind of ironic situation occurred here? Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea from AD 26 to AD 36. He was not a kind leader, and a number of his actions caused consternation among the inhabitants of the land, compared with Luke 13, 1. The Jewish trial of Jesus resulted in a death sentence of blasphemy. But under Roman, Roman rule, the Jews could not execute people in, the most, in most cases. And so they brought Jesus to Pilate for condemnation. The charge against Jesus before Pilate is not mentioned, but it is possible to ascertain the charge based on the brief question that Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? In Old Testament times, Israel anointed its kings, so it is not hard to see how the term Messiah, anointed one, could be twisted into claiming homage as a king in competition with the emperor. Thus, the charge brought before the Sanhedrin was blasphemy, while the charge brought before the governor was sedition, which would lead to death. All right. In the comments? All right, we get, we're going to get off Pilate. Do anybody know after Pilate did this, his wife had a dream and, wrote, and they, she wrote a letter and sent it to him. And like I said, Eric told, don't touch this man, he's innocent. But he went on doing what he had to do, right? Mm -hmm. So do y'all know how Pilate ended up? He lost his man. Yeah. He, he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. yep. He committed suicide. All right, and then we go to uh, Monday's part now. Hail, King of Jews. Who said this? Hail, King of Jews. The 
people Who said were, that? The people were saying that when they was mocking Christ. Right. When they were condemning him and making fun of him and spitting on him and making him a crown of thorn and putting on him a, a purple robe. They had him not out front, but had him in the back where people couldn't see all this. All right. Sister Harry. You know, we focus a lot on the crucifixion because it was painful physically. But, you know, this part was even more, I think, more devastating because this was dealing with him psychologically. Here you are ridiculing me, you know, and I think our salvation, you know, it, it, it was both, both of these, the physical and the psychological, was just as devastating. Our salvation here in the back balance because he never used his divine power to do anything. But I know he was tempted when this part came in, how they were just putting a purple robe on him and just, you know, just, and he could have just, you know, just batted his eyes and all of them would have been dead. But our salvation would have been held in the balance. And I just thank God. We focus on the nailing in the hand. But I know this psychological thing had to be rough on him. Right. All right. It says, uh, on the Monday's part, hell, the king of the Jews, they were saying this. And they had uh, thought about how Jesus would go through villages and towns and heal everybody. Mm -hmm. And they said, now, look at him now. What is he doing? He's not doing anything. But they didn't understand, did they? They didn't understand why he wasn't saying anything, short answers. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, let me go back to this. I was going to ask this. What can keep you from following the crowd when the pressure is great to do so? What keep us from following the crowd? Uh, we know we're supposed to work on the Sabbath, work on the Sabbath. We know we're supposed to do this, that, or the other. What keeps us from doing that? Well, I think one thing that kept, I'm trying to go back to when Jesus got um, first accused. And it's kind of sad that you look at the Jews, they were the main people that were pushing the pressure on Jesus. And I can only imagine, I, I, well, I'm only imagining this, I cannot believe that everybody that was in that particular area, when it comes to the king, the, not the kings, the Judeans, the council, agreed with what was going on. And I believe in my heart, somebody had to have a feeling like, why are we doing this? You know what I'm saying? That this was too, as like you said, a coward to stick up for it. I would like to believe that. But I know in my heart of hearts that following a crowd sometimes is very difficult. But I try to make sure, I always pray, because I know that's the thing that gave Jesus strength. Because he knew that he could have eliminated that whole crowd if he wanted to. He could have saved face by just doing what he had to do. He could have, when they was asking him to save himself, he could have done that because they was putting pressure on him, his own folks. And I'm sure in the back of their mind they're going like, okay, this man has been healing folks all this time, and now he can't save himself. It's a lot of pressure both ways. But you got to re realize your common goal in life. And that's your goal is to please God. And when you're in any kind of situation, if you can remember, is this what Jesus would do? Then you're going to be all right. Right. Wait. I would say Jesus wasn't concerned about saving himself because he was too busy trying to save us. All right. Right. Yeah, you said but, right. But teacher, when we go back and we look at, at Psalms 22, which is prophecy, it talks about this time and, and how Jesus would go through what he had to go through. So Jesus, Jesus couldn't go, he would not go against what he had already said, told us in, pro, in prophecy in Psalms, how he would die, the surroundings uh, in which he would die. And, and, and so he was not going to go against that, even though he was, he was treated wrong. He, he, he had to fulfill prophecy. That was, his, that was his purpose. And so he had to endure all of that. And, 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 and um, when we think about, um, well, if we go back and we think about what he said on the cross when we get to uh, his exclamation 
Eli, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani. You know, that's all foretold in prophecy. The surroundings, the, 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 the um, casting of a lot for his garment and so on and so forth. So Jesus was about, and Matthew pointed out, about fulfilling the prophecies. And so he wasn't going to go against that. All right. It says, uh, read Mark 15, 15 through 20. What did the soldiers do to Jesus and what is his significance? They dressed him in a purple robe and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. And they stuck him on his head into a reed stick and spit on him and mm -hmm. talked about him and mocked him. And what did Jesus say? Not a mumbling word. The Roman utilized a severe form of beating to prepare prisoners for execution. The victim was stripped of his clothes, tied to a pole, and then lashed with leather whips with which pieces of bone, glass, stones, and nail were tied together. After Jesus was whipped, the soldiers tasked with his execution continued to humiliate him, humiliation by clothing him in a purple robe placing a crown of thorns on his head and marking him as king of the Jews. The group of soldiers is called battalion. In this case, anywhere from 200 to 600 men were marking him and laughing at him doing this. All right, any questions? Hey. Hey. All right, bro, take. After he did all this for you and I, going through everything, humiliation and everything. But in, in this day and time, I myself has to know who I'm serving. I have to know, no matter what's going on, I have to have a relationship with God in order to put up, no matter what's, whatever is happening, I have made up in my mind, come hell or high water, I'm going to follow Jesus because he went through too much for me. Once you acknowledge what God has gone through for you and I, and I have settled it in my mind, what I'm going to do, and each individual have to make up their mind, realizing what God went through for them, or they're going to make up their mind, they're going to accept Christ, or they're going to deny it. Right. All right, it says on reflection. All right. Um, these men had no idea what they Brother were doing. Teacher. Why? Though Brother their teacher. ignorance not excuse them on the judgment day. By them not knowing what they were doing, will this excuse them on judgment day? No. All right. Why not? If nothing else, being a human being and treating each other in that manner is just wrong. Whether you are a soldier or not, and you have certain orders that's conflicting with moral dignity and what's right to do. So whether they just following orders or not, those orders were wrong. And you know, yeah, their jobs might have been at stake, but they were crucifying and they were belittling and they were uh, terrorizing an innocent person who happened to be the king of the universe. Okay. And then, Brother Herbert, they heard Pilate himself say, I find no fault in this man. And I also want to pick it back on that, too. We look at the church from la from time of trouble, we think that it's going to be the people outside the church or outside our family that's going to cause us harm. But it was the people that Jesus close to this, this, these, these church members, they were calling them out. They were telling them what was going on. His own, his own, his own followers set them up. So we're looking, at, we're looking at the wrong thing. Time of trouble is going to be us. Some of us sitting in the church is going to be there telling on us. They're going to be getting us in harm's way. 
So we need to know that we got to have our arms close to Jesus because the person sitting next to you in your household may be one that rat you off. And the only thing going to hold you is Jesus. And to see this scene here, to know that your own folk going to be hollering at you when it comes time of trouble. You better keep your eyes fixed on God and not on man because your own person's close to you going to let you down. All right. Brother Teacher, uh, this week as I went through the lesson, and it's just, you know, this is the living word. You always get something new when you go into the word of God. And, uh, you know, as I was reading and going through these scriptures about all he went through, and as Leo always says, you know, we've got to have a personal relationship with Christ. And when you make this crucifixion all about you, and it has to be personal. That's right. He did it all for me. Right. Right. I mean, I'm reading the lesson and tears just coming down my eyes because he did it for me. And if I had been the only one on this earth living, he still would have done it for me. And when you make it personal like that, yes. you can't sin against him. Okay. You can't do anything against him. You can't do anything but love him because he did it for me. Right. I'm just, I was just praising the Lord. All right. Uh, this is read Mark 15, 21 through 38. What terrible and painful irony appears in these passages. At this point in the Passover narrative, Jesus is a silent victim, controlled by people who are bent on his death. Throughout the gospel, up to his arrest, he was the master of activities. Now he is acted upon. Though he was a robust, entering preacher, the beating he had received and the lack of food and sleep wore on him down to where a stranger had to bear his cross. At the cross, his garments were removed and became the property of the soldiers who cast lots to see whose they would be compared with Psalms 22, 18. The crucifixion was a fairly bloodless method of execution. The nails used to fasten a person to the cross were likely driven through the wrist below the palm where no bl major blood vessel run. So it said he wasn't on the cross doing a whole, whole lot of bleeding like that uh, crazy play they had out about uh, Jesus, Passion, Christ. It wasn't like that. Because those people were so cruel, they knew where to put a nail in you where you wouldn't bleed out. Now that's some satanic stuff. Okay. Okay, when, when they uh, scourge him, um, I have learned that, that um, it makes you um, recognize it when they, when they whipped him like that. And um, sometimes the, his, the guts come out on you uh, when it's good. So, so he um, suffered a tremendous amount of pain uh, from that. And then when he got on the cross, uh, he felt every sin from, from Adam to the end of time, um, all that was, was on him. And so I believe that, and that's why I have never followed the crowd. Okay. All right. Under the part on the crucifixion, it goes on to say that uh, Jesus on the cross at the, called now 9 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. And they say usually when they put these criminals on the cross, Took him three days to die. Three days. How long did it take Jesus to die? Six hours. Six hours. Six, six hours. And they brought out that, yes, he was in a lot of pain, but he didn't die from the pain. What did he die of? The heartbreak that he received from separation from his father. Right. Right. All right. Any comments or questions? All right, go to Wednesday's part. All right, Brother David. You know, listening to Sister Harold speaking about the agony that Christ had gone through, 
you know, I, I was thinking about how he lived those 33 and a half years as far as what he had to endure. I mean, living just as an individual, a human being. I mean, I mean, all the things that he suffered, especially when he started his ministry, as far as uh, the Lamb of God, that, that Passover Lamb. And all Satan wanted to do was to get him to sin. I mean, for all, the, all that time that he lived, not one sin, not even in thought, not even in thought, because if he had, he would be a, an imperfect sacrifice. So, I mean, all that he endured when he was being beaten, and he was beaten about, about four or five times before he got to the cross. It wasn't just that one time. So, I mean, he endured quite a bit. And just like the pastor said today, he became sin for us. Sin. So, I mean, it's, it's not a little thing for us to have that kind of desire as far as the relationship that Brother Tate is talking about. I mean, this is something that we should take within every day as far as living, living that life that Christ has called us to live, our, our obedient life. All right. It says, uh, forsaken by God. It said, read Mark 15, 33 through 41. What are Jesus' only words on the cross in Mark? What were his only words? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken or abandoned me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does Christ's death up to me mean for all of us? What does death mean for us? That we can be saved in his kingdom, that we can be forgiven, we can have mercy, we can have grace, we can go boldly before the throne of grace. Right. All right, and when you said these words, was he about to die then or did he die later? He died later. Okay. What did he say before he died? Forgive them for they know not what they Forgive do. Them. It is finished. Wait a minute, I'm hearing two or three different things. What did, what did it, he say? It is finished. It is finished. Roger, what you say? No. He forgave them. He forgave them for their sin. He asked for forgiveness. Okay. All right. And after he died, what happened? After he bowed his head and died, what happened? The veil of the temple was rent. Okay. They said the veil of the temple was torn. Mm -hmm. What was that representing? At that particular when time. That veil, let us let us know. Mm -hmm. She hadn't seen anything. The, the veil in the temple was writ, uh, rent from top to bottom. That represented that Jesus was the uh, sacrifice. You know, we had the earthly uh, sanctuary and uh, uh, all the uh, rituals that uh, was done in the earthly sanctuary. It all pointed to Jesus, the uh, ultimate sacrifice. So. When he died on the cross, that was done and over. You know, when he uh, ascended to heaven and went to the, uh, uh, the first apartment of the uh, sanctuary. Right. It says the rending of the veil of the temple showed that the Jewish sacrifices and ordinance would no longer be received. The great sacrifice had been offered and had been accepted. And the Holy Spirit, which descended on the day of Pentecost, carried the minds of the disciples from the earthly sanctuary to the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus had entered by his own blood to shed upon the disciples and the benefits. Brother I just teacher. thought about something, y'all. Where were the disciples doing all of this? Where were the disciples, the ones that walked with him, talked with him, ate with him? Where were they? In hiding. What's that big? They were in hiding. They were hiding. They were in hiding. Hiding. They were afraid. Because 
They I mean, had, tell me they walked with Jesus. They Jesus just, told them everything that was going to happen. Why were right. they hiding? Because they did not accept the fact that this was Jesus. This was his mission. They were still thinking that Jesus was going to exonerate the Jews and become and cause them to be the nation that they had always been taught. Right. But Jesus didn't come for that. He came to die for the sins, for their sins. Okay. Oh, uh, got Brother Dabney. Well, there, there was one, uh, Larry, wait a minute, Larry, take Mike. What you doing? <laughs> well, there was one disciple, and that was John. Because Christ told John, behold, his mother. And he gave John his mother to take care of her. So John was there. He was there, but all well, the rest well, of them flee. How long was he there? Well, I mean, to, I guess he took his mother away anyway. But he okay. was there. Okay. So, I mean, he wasn't like all the other ten that had fled, as Jesus told them that they all would do. Okay. All right. Vic? No. Okay. All right, so like like sister brought about when the when the veil of the temple was torn out, that did away with the sanctuary services, all them rituals. But we have people right today that believe in those rituals still. And they still uh we got Adventists, because one came to me, but I said, that stuff been done away. You know, it was just shocking what they said to me about that sacrificial stuff. But that just goes to show we gotta read the Bible for yourself. You know, we hear all these sermons, but you got to read and study the Bible for yourself. And no one understand because it's going to get rougher than this the closer we get to the end of time. All right. He says, even despite the evil plotting of humanity, God's purpose will fulfill you. Why should this help us learn that regardless of what happens around us, we can still trust God and know that his goodness will ultimately prevail? All right, Thursday, laid to rest. Someone sum this up right quick. Vic, you look like you got some summing up in you. <laughs> no, it's, this was really something, though. From, go, go ahead, Vic. No, I was, the amazing thing about this part of the lesson is that Jesus is laid into a tomb. And when he uh, was resurrected by God's grace, that other tombs were opened too. The Romans, as well as the Jews, were trying to keep silent. They wanted to keep it silent about what had transpired during that weekend. But right. God had witnesses. Right. The people got up out of their graves and testified that Christ had risen. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was, that was marvelous right. because it had to be spread abroad that Jesus had, that he was raised. He was raised from the dead, that God had raised him. Right. Bag up a little bit. Who came to, to receive uh, Jesus' body? Yeah. Okay. Y'all know his background. Yeah. Right. He was one of the high ups in the Sanhedrin, right. but he believed Jesus. Right. They say he was mighty bold to ask to get his body, right. but he had a relationship with that cow we talked about earlier, and he went and asked him for it, and he, he got Jesus' body. Yeah, that's true. Right? Right. Yes, ma'am. You know, mention this black man that carried his you know, helped him with that cross. We said we still carry a cross. <laughs> <laughs> I just want us to kind of mention him, you know. Black history. Okay. That's it. That's true. How ironic that Jesus' followers are missing in action while a member of the Sanhedrin, the very body that condemned Jesus, becomes the hero here. How can we be sure that in crucial times we are not missing in action either? 
how can we make sure we are not won't be missing? Because if you read the book Preparation for the Final Crisis, it's going to be Adventist telling or Adventist telling where we are. Mm -hmm. How can we make sure we won't be one of the ones telling and not the one running? It's, it's our love for the truth. Okay. That those of us who love the truth and are sanctified by it, we won't be a part of that. We won't be part of that group. No, we're, yeah, then, Brother talking. Herbert, we have to be it has to be willing, which is Lord's help by power of the Holy Ghost, he'll bring us through it. You know pressure gonna be on you. You know pressure gonna be on you. God's word teach all of us it's better to obey God than to trust in man. Mm -hmm. And also it's like practice. If you always stand up for right, you won't have no problem nine times out of 10 standing for right when it comes to the end of time. But if you one of the ones who always follow the crowd, always, saying hee-haw, and always trying to get favor with people, you're going to be weak when it comes time. But if you want this already practicing and standing firm on ideas and principles, then nine times out of ten when it comes to time of trouble, you're going to be the one who stand up for right then. Okay. I'm going to end with this because young people getting ready to come in. It says, look at how central theology of substitution was to Ellen G. White and also to the Bible, see for instance Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. Why is any theology that downplays the central role of the substitute and Christ dying in our stead, paying in himself the penalty for our sins, a false theology? We know the truth behind that. Who or what is the Barabbas in today's world that gets asked for instead of Jesus? Who is the Barabbas today? Mm -hmm. Who is the Barabbas today? I would say false teachings. Okay. False teachings can be mm -hmm. the Barabbas mm -hmm. of today. Anything that Positions. teaches against the word of God. Mm -hmm. Positions. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, teacher, that, it's sure. interesting that name, Barabbas, is, means son of the father. So anyone who is um, spreading, helping to spread false, a false understanding of the Christ is a son of the Father, uh, the son of Satan. And, and as such, then, you know, we, we, we use the term antichrist, but yes, they are antichrist. Right, right. And then uh, I'll discuss some question on the Fridays in the book, it says, what should the story of Joseph of Arimathea tell us about not judging outward appearance? Y'all know he was with him. He was a big man in Sanhedrin. He wasn't against Jesus, but he was with this group, that one of the highest groups of that time. And he was talking about, go ahead. I want to mention that Joseph of Arimathea and also Nicodemus, they were not a part of the council to condemn Jesus. You know, Jesus was tried by night. Mm. They were not a part of that. And the reason why they were not a part of that because the other body of the, the Sanhedrins and the, and, the, and the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were trying to condemn Jesus. And they knew that these two men were going to go up against their opposition. And so that's why they were never a part of that council to condemn Christ. Right. But, but also... It was against their own rules to have hearings at night. They were doing it under the cloak of darkness, you know, not only to keep Nicodemus and, and maybe Joseph of Arimathea out, but it was just against all their principles to have these kinds of hearing at night. And I mean, I guess the, the foolishness of it, whereas that when it came to the day when they took him to Pilate, they didn't even want to go into his hall so they wouldn't be defiled, but they, they are trying to kill a person. You know, I mean, they were just warped in their thinking. It was told, they were totally being led by Satan. Right, and that's, and that says, good point. And about us today, the disciples walked and talked and ate with Jesus. So what about us? Can the same thing happen to us? Yes. But I'm not gonna leave the disciples messed up like that. <laughs> 
When did, the, when did the disciples finally get it? They didn't get it. They walked with Jesus, talked to it. They didn't get it. When did they finally get it? After the resurrection. The Holy Spirit came into their lives. No. It's a certain time they, they got it. Day of Pentecost. When Peter preached and 3,000 some came to the church. But, oh. but teacher, uh -huh. uh, 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 after Jesus rose, and after he came back and he was fellowshipping with the disciples, he talked to Peter and he says, Peter, feed my sheep. He asked him three times, would he, would he serve him? Would he follow him? You know, Jesus had already said, told Peter that when he was converted. So they had walked with him three and a half years. They were not converted yet. They were not converted until after he rose the day of Pentecost when, they, when he had spent that 40 days working with them and talking with them. Then they were converted. Right. It speaks to us to say that, to, to examine ourselves, because we may think that we're converted. We may think that we're in lock, lockstep with Jesus, and we may not be converted yet. Right. It may take something. I don't know what it is, but it may take something to help us to see that we are in need of conversion. And then, Brother Herbert in class, in, uh, we're studying this on the influence of the Holy Spirit in the book of Mark. Now, next quarter, we'll be studying it in the book of John. Notice the difference, but the meaning is the same. All right. Good study, everybody. We, uh, I want you all to encourage your brothers and thank you to those online. And again, to those online, we want you to participate as well. So our media team will be monitoring the chat. So if you have questions or comments, go ahead and put it in the chat and we'll acknowledge that. Let's say amen again for our facilitator, Brother Herbert. Amen. Always does a fine job. Now, what we're going to do, we're not going to have a uh, closing prayer right now because we're actually going to go ahead and transition into our AY. We ask that you would stay, and then we'll have the closing prayer at the end. Let me make one more observation while they're coming. These are the T-shirts that Longview will be wearing at the Fun Fest. Good-looking good looking shirt. It has all the names of the churches on there. We even have the name of the new church, Genesis, on there. So anyway, this Sister Hard don't start, nothing it won't be nothing. Oh, we, we, still, we still online now, you know. It don't make me no difference. <laughs> All right, that being said, so these are our shirts. So see Sister Edith Cleveland for those and uh, pick you up one as well. We're going to have a, a great time. So again, we're not going to have a benediction. We're just going to go ahead and transition. And we ask that you would stay and support our young people. Stay At least stay as long as you can. Let's say amen. If you have to leave, go ahead and tip out quietly. But let's say amen that Sister Maya is coming with our AY presentation. Come on, y'all. We can encourage them better than that. Amen. All right, thank y'all for coming to AYM. Uh, before y'all get too comfortable, can I ask a favor? So we're gonna have two teams for this game. So uh, for this, people who are sitting over here, do y'all mind moving right here just so y'all can be a team? And then it's a lot of y'all, so maybe we should do three teams. So yeah, we're gonna do three teams, one, two, and then three. So nobody else has to move. But all right, we, we already said prayers, so we're just gonna continue on. Um, welcome to AYM. 
Jalen, you can go ahead on and show it. We're going to begin with our mission, aim, motto, and pledge. Oh, one second, sorry. All right, so we can all just stand up and recite the mission first. All right, to lead young people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and help them embrace his call to discipleship. Aim the Advent message to all the world in my generation. Motto, the love of Christ compels me. Pledge, loving the Lord Jesus, I promise to take an active part in the youth ministry of the church, doing what I can to help others and to finish the work of the gospel in all the world. All right, so today we are going to play Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Y'all can sit down. I'm sorry. Y'all can sit down. We're going to play Bible Feud or Family Feud. Pretty sure y'all are familiar with that. All right. So, can I get a spokesperson? Hmm. Let's see who's going to go first. Let me get one person from each team to come up here right quick, please. I'm gonna let y'all pick. I'm not gonna call on anybody yet. No mic yet. No mic. Not yet. Brian, you coming? All right, one more person from team two. One person? Nobody? You wanna come? Come on. Yes. So, to see who goes first, we're gonna play rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that, that does make sense. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I guess that's right. So we're going to go by age. So team two, you're going to go first, then team t one, and then team three. Make sure y'all remember y'all order because my mind is bad. All right, so team one, no, team two and one, y'all going to go first. So y'all can come over here and press the buzzer to see. I'm going to say the question, go over there to press the buzzer. Okay, I'm going to read the question. Y'all ready? Name an Old Testament prophet. Y'all can talk amongst your team. Y'all can answer the question. If, you're, if you feel confident, y'all can answer the question first. So on the count of three, let's see who presses the buzzer first. One, two, three. Oh, what? So that was you, Mark? Okay. So, uh, Tariah is going to answer first. You want to answer first, Tariah? You're going to name an Old Testament prophet. You ready? You want to consult with your team first? Okay, go consult with your team. The team say Isaiah. Oh, sorry. Come on. Uh, 
Isaiah. 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 Next question. Next question. All right, so Taraya, you get to answer this next question. Wait. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm doing this all wrong. Yeah, what's he talking about? Have to get all the answers on the board. Board. All right. Taraya, all right. do you have any other guesses? You're going to consult with your team? You, you can go over there by your team. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah is number four on the board. All right, Taraya. Good job. Uh oh. You have any more guesses? You want to consult with your team? Noah. Noah is number two on the board. All right. Any more answers? Is it a game? Yeah, it's a game. Oh. So, X, you got two more. Moses. Moses is the number one answer. Yeah. All right. Last. All right. Last and final answer to Ryan. Ezekiel? Ezekiel is not on the board. So, y'all have two more guesses. Oh no. Two more guesses and then team two get to steal the answer. God? God? Samuel? Samuel is Samuel. Samuel is not on the board. So I get one more. Oh, raise my one. Two X. So we got one more. Not Joshua. No. All right, team. You. I'm going to say Elijah. Elijah is not on the board. I'm going to miss. All right. All right, team. Yes. What y'all think? Wait. Yeah, we get three. Get three eggs. And then we get, we get them on the end. Yeah, two more, two more tries. So what y'all think? What? Yeah, y'all have three. Y'all have two more tries. Nehemiah, huh? well, y'all, team team two, y'all done answering. Y'all got three X's, so it's, it's on team. Daniel. Two. Daniel. Yes. The last Daniel. answer. All right. So team, y'all, I, I, I made a mistake, so I didn't add it's team Daniel. three on here. So, yeah, we just going to put y'all together. Team one, no, oh, one, two. So team two, y'all still in the lead right now. All right, next. Oh, that was y'all? My bad, my bad, my bad. All right. Oh, no. 
Next round. Yes. All right, name a woman mentioned in the Bible. So we're going to have two representatives. We need another representative. Or are you going to be the spokesperson? Alex, do you want to you be a spokesperson now? Okay. Uh, anybody else on team two? Would y'all like to be the spokesperson? You want to, you want to be the spokesperson? Okay. Oh. Yes. So y'all actually one team. Well, actually, Brian. Brian didn't go. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, Brian. Yep. So I realized I made a mistake the first go round. Each person was supposed to give an answer, and whoever got the highest answer got to continue to play. So, what is your answer, Brian? I'm sorry. Take 10. I would like to say Esther. Esther? Esther is number four. I tried, team. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. She, she team. Sa Sarah. Yeah. They team two together. Oh. Yeah, they join the team. Y'all are on the same team. Okay. So we need another spokesperson. You're not gonna speak again. Bye, 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 bye. Did nobody else? You want? Okay, Mark. Just what's your answer? Mary. Mary, that is the number one answer. So, would y'all like to pass or play? Play? All right. Next answer. Okay, team one, I'm gonna let y'all answer. Ella? Ruth. Ruth is the number Team one. Eve. Eve. Eve is number two. Okay, Hannah. Hannah is not on the board. Mm. What'd you say? Deborah is not on the board. Mm. Yeah, we'll have we'll one more we'll answer, and team two will be able to. Hold on, hold on. So they said name a woman from the Bible. Jenna Nathan. Selma. Selma. Sarah is number three on the board. <laughs> Last and final answer. Elizabeth. Elizabeth is not on the board. So team two, you all get to steal their points if you can get the final answer. Um. Hmm. Anybody? It's, it's on team two. Huh. Yeah, y'all time. Been up. Delilah, Naomi? Um, after careful consideration, my team has decided that we're going to go with Jezebel. Isabel is not on the board. Is, is it Delala? <sighs> yeah, we got one more. It's on them. Y'all got two more guesses. Oh, we got two more guesses? Ooh. Okay. Oh, they still got to go. Okay. My team has also said Delilah. No. Nope. No, Delilah? Oh, Ooh, we. Come on, team. Come on. I need y'all. Huh. When. Y'all see this answer. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go with one of the matriarchs, Rebecca. Ooh, no. Oh. 
All right. Who could it be? T1, do y'all think y'all got it? No, they don't get no more chances. They already messed up. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what y'all think? Uh, Mary Magdalene. Nope. Martha. The answer? Martha yeah. Magdalene. Y'all want me to reveal the answer? Rachel. Oh. Nobody said Rachel. Uh, unfortunate, unfortunate. Oops. Next round. Name an animal referred to in the Bible. Oh my. All right. Hmm. You gonna be the spokesperson this round? All right. Okay, well, you can take the mic too. You wanna take the mic? All right, team one, since y'all won the last round, name an animal referred to in the Bible. Lamb, lamb. Name an animal referred to in the Bible. We yes. first or they first? Yes, y'all first. Y'all won. Lion. A lion is um, right here, number four. So y'all get the okay. point. Lamb. La lamb. Wait, which one y'all going with? Lamb or snake? She, so you said lamb. I said lamb. Lamb is number two on the board. All right, so team two. Y'all want to pass or play? Play. Play. All right. Let's go. Okay, serpent. A serpent? Yes, that's number three on the board. Next. Uh, dove. A dove, number one. Okay, okay. Y'all got four more on the board with Three chances to answer in Korean. Donkey. A donkey. Yes. Five on the board. Okay. Okay. Um, fish. A fish. No. Okay. Um. Oxen. Goat. Goats. No, it's not on the board. Okay. Uh. Okay, whale. A whale? Mm, no, it's not on the board. All right, teams one. You Eagle. Eagle. I was going to say donkey. Y'all got two what more is, answers. What is that? Oh, donkey. Hey. Oh, okay. We already got donkey on there. That's another it. Hey. Donkey already. Wait. Okay, family feud fanatics. <laughs> <laughs> Show the answer, though. Show the answer. All right. The, the uh, rest of the answers was a horse. And a camel. Okay. Oh. Team one, you won that round. Yeah, we tried. Okay. All right. Next, we have name a miracle performed by Jesus. So Turn wa water into wine. Turn water into wine. All right. I it's number four. All right. Heal the blind man. The number one answer. Okay. Right, Team number one, pass or play? Play. Play. All right. Huh? Wait, no. Let's say it's What's she saying? What's she saying? What's she saying? 
It's a, a miracle, name for, a miracle, miracle performed, performed, by, performed Jesus. by Jesus. All right. Y'all got three I'm answers joking. left. That's the first one. Yeah. Raise the dead. Yep. That's number two answer. What, what, what's the answer? Spokesman's person? The loaves of bread and fish. Fish and the loaves? Yeah. That is the number three answer. Ooh, the number five answer. Miracle. Huh. Okay, so. Final answer. Everybody should know that. Walked on water. That is the final answer. That is the first time anybody has cleared the board by themselves. Go team one. Next. Name one of the books of the Old Testament. So the first question was name an Old Testament prophet. This one is to name a, one of the old books of the Testament. I'd say um, Genesis. Wait, ain't it our turn? Don't we go first? Don't we go first since we won? Yes. All right. Genesis. Genesis. All right. Genesis is number two. All right. Team one. Psalms. Psalms. Exodus. Wait. Oh, Team yeah. two got the hard answer, yeah, so, so they go. They they go. go. Y'all want to pass or play? Play. Play. All right. Exodus. Exodus is the number one answer. Um, Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah is not on the board. Um, Daniel. Daniel is not on the board. Leviticus. Leviticus is the number four answer. One more answer. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is yes. Y'all on the roll. They got it. Oh wait, I didn't give y'all any points. They got it. Bible, that's our Aaron. next category. Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the number one answer. So y'all, pass the play. <laughs> play. All right, let's go. Keep rolling with the answers. Y'all doing good. Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the number three answer. You've given the wrong team points. Jericho. Jericho is the number five. Mm. What? The fifth answer. Mm -mm -mm. Nazareth. The number two. Nazareth. 
The Mascus. The Mascus. No, on board. Unfortunately. Samaria. Samaria is not on the board. Five, four, three. Okay, Egypt. Egypt is not on the board. Uh, team one, let's see what y'all can do. Sodom and Gomorrah. Which one? Pick one. Sodom. Sodom is number six. Yeah. I started to say that. I started to say that. Yes. I started to say Sodom. Oh. Uh, Yes, yeah, so. I started to say so. Babylon. All right. Congratulations, team one. Name one of the Ten Commandments. Whoop, whoop. No. Thou shalt not kill. Good. Thou shalt not kill. Actually, number seven, sorry. It's worth six points. How does that work? Thou shalt have no other gods before. Thou okay. shalt have no other gods before me. That's number eight. Wow. So. Thou shalt. Number, thou shalt look. I mean, team one. Yeah, we're going to play. We gonna play. Oh. All right. That's when I steal. Thou shalt not steal is number three. Yeah, don't, adultery, don't commit adultery. That's not commit adultery. That's number five. Honor thy father and thy mother. Number two. That's, that's, no That's not bear false witness. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm, that, that's, that's too easy. Uh, that was, this is, that was, this was made not, by Sunday people. This yeah, made by Sun, say, this made by this made by Sunday people. This. Yeah, this made by Sunday people. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That shall not covet. That shall not covet is number four. Third, yeah. Last one. Love thy neighbor. Nope. Too late. I already got the answer. Oh. Did they miss one? Okay, so what's number one? Uh huh. Is it out time now? The person is Ten, okay. nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. What? Y'all got it. Woo! Go team okay. one. Okay. Good job. All right. This will be the last round. I wish I could get this. I know all. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I was giving the other team. I'm sorry. Hey, this will be the last round, and then we're going to continue this game next month because it's a lot of slides, and we haven't even gotten halfway through. Next, last but not least, name a gift the three kings brought to baby Jesus. Mirth. It's only three answers. Mirth, mirth, 
Mercy. Wait, it's team once because they won. Gold. Gold is the number one answer. All right, team. Merit and frankincense. What you say? M. Mer. Merth. Mer. 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 Frankincense. That was a little too easy, now. Yeah, okay, that was too easy. We gotta, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going. One last, this is the last one for real. Last one for real. Last one for real. All right, team two, y'all won. I mean, one, y'all won. It was only three gifts. Yeah, last round. This is the last round for real. Give a name you hear a lot in the Bible. Mark. Wait, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Nobody here. What Bible are you reading? All right, team one. Jesus. Jesus is the number one answer. And I mean that figuratively and literally. Excuse me, excuse me. You get it? Excuse me. We got it. God. You didn't say Mark. They, they, they got you. You said Mark. I mean, no, he said. So, what y'all would do? If they want it. Barbecue or music. If they want it, they can, you know what I'm saying? If they want it, it is what it is. If they want it. Yeah, if they want it, they can have it. I can't oh, can't right. do that on the so, Sabbath. Was this what was this y'all number one answer though? Was this y'all answer? Jesus. We're gonna say Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. It really don't matter. Yeah, we're gonna skip this one. So we can be fair. We're gonna skip this one. Yeah, y'all can go first. Name someone from the Bible whose name starts with the letter J. Wow. Joshua. Joshua. But we let them go first. Joshua. Joshua is number seven. So. Jesus. Jesus is the number one answer again. <laughs> it's supposed to be middle. In the middle. We going to play. Play. Job. Job. Oh, Job is not on the board. Okay, Jeremiah is not on the board. I mean, oops, wait. John is on the board. Who? Jonah. Jonah? Jonah's not on the board. Remember, we only got two, though. Keep the two, because you said John wasn't up there. No, Y'all said John. Yeah, but you said it went up. No, I said the first the first name y'all said before John. Y'all said two people that wasn't on the board. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah, y'all said Job bad. and y'all said Jonah. My bad. And then Jonah. My bad, my bad. Mm -mm. But we just said Jonah, right? Just now. Y'all said Job and jo Jonah. Okay, yeah, that's all I was trying to hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got one more. Yes. Joseph. Joseph is number four. He's number four. Judas. Judas is number two. Next. Two more. Yeah. Because. Don't be looking at your Bibles either. Uh, we ain't got Five. no Bibles up here. Four. Three. Jeremiah. Two. No. Okay. Yeah. All right, team. Two. Y'all have two. One time to get all the points. Jacob. Jacob is the answer. Wait. Okay. Number five. Number six is Jonathan. Okay. All right. So like I said, we're going to continue this game next month. We got about 20 more slides. So make sure y'all remember y'all teammates if y'all want to win. Uh, there is a snack bag for y'all downstairs. Can we get someone to close out? Oh, it's over there. 
So can we get someone to close out prayer with prayer for us, please? Bow your heads, please. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us here on another beautiful Sabbath day and just helping us to be able to play a game and learn more about you. I pray that you will give us all safe traveling mercies home and I just bless us to be able to be a witness to someone, forgive us of our sins, help us to be ready when you come. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank y'all so much for, for staying and participating. We appreciate you.